feel like as we were worshiping, the Lord told me to tell you something to start us off. And it's very simple. But he said, I want you to tell them that I love them and that he is with you even till the end of the age. So God says, I love you so much and he's with you to the end of the age. So thank you, Lord, <laughs> for being with us. So here's what we're going to do. going to transition to our sharing time and I just want to teach a little bit real real briefly on what we're sharing maybe what to share and what not to share <laughs> scripture says that uh, well the apostle Paul wrote in first Corinthians 14 that we should eagerly desire all the gifts of the spirit but especially prophecy and prophecy is speaking under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And of course, that can happen in a moment. And spontaneously is what we would call that. Like right now, boom, just start speaking under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. But you know, if you're sitting in your bedroom at home and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit comes on you and he gives you a word and you write it down, it's the same thing when you share that word. So prophecy essentially is the Lord speaking through you. It's not just telling the future that's one small piece of what it can be but it's and jesus said when the holy spirit comes he will speak to you he won't speak on his own he'll speak what i'm giving him me and the father and he will tell you what is to come and so future telling or foretelling can be part of it but it's also just speaking god's heart and speaking god's will specific will it's not adding to scripture it's really specifying, giving a specific direction for what scripture generically says is, is God's will for us. And so as we enter into this time, um, I wanna invite any of you who feel like the Lord's given you something to share to come share, kind of each in turn. And we're gonna do it like pop, what I call popcorn style. So when I'm done, with this microphone, I'm going to put it on this stand. And if you're a short person, do your best to just crank it down like this. And if you're a tall person, do your best to just crank it up um, and, and let the mic be. <laughs> and popcorn style is you share, you go sit down, and then we wait, and then someone else pops, and they come up and share. And then we just let people share until the popping stops. And after the popping stops, that's when you take it out of the microwave. And so after it slows down and it seems like no one, you know, everybody's done, uh, then I'm going to get up and, and transition us to, to kind of end our night. Um, and we are going to close the night with, with kind of a one last special prayer time. After the sharing time, I'm going to ask uh, our staff and the elders and leaders to sit on the front row. Uh, I, I would say with their with their spouses. I'll say it that way. If I say with our families, we're not all going to fit on the front row. So, um, although if you got babies, bring them on up. Um, <laughs> and then, and then just invite you all to pray over us and give, if you have a specific word for someone, uh, to do that, to give that to them at that time. So that being said, if you have a specific word, that's like just for one of our staff or elders, save it for the end. So this time right here is for words that are for our church family in this time in this season so it could look like a dream a vision um it could look like a scripture it could just look like a prophetic word um it's it's very simple um if you're not sure if you're ambiguous if it's like i had this dream and it you know it was long there were pink elephants and i'm not sure what it means but i think it might be for the church let's not share that okay um, if you have it, if you're like, I know this is for the church, I want to share it. Awesome. Um, and guys, it can be very brief. It can be very simple. Um, don't, and don't underestimate <laughs> some of those simple words that the Lord may have given you. Don't underestimate those. Um, if it's like a scripture 
and there's a teaching with it and here's what it means and it's it's long and drawn out it's more about unpacking a revelation from scripture um, probably not the type of thing that that we're looking for tonight um, so again I guess I should say this also not necessarily a word God gave you for you so try to use discernment there and last thing I'll say is again I've said this several times at church but we're not talking about the Lord told me what's going on in the nation this year or the nation of Israel or those types of words. I know some of you get those types of words. God bless you. That's not what tonight is for. Um, but I want to encourage you because Paul tells us all to pray for the gift of prophecy. He wants us all to be able to hear from the Lord. The Lord wants us all to be able to hear from him. And I believe all the Lord's people are prophets. That's just what I believe. Um, because he said, when he pours out the Spirit, the way Joel 2 and Acts 2 read, all will prophesy. And all can prophesy if you would press into that. And so, um, and I'm going to be honest with you, as people are sharing tonight, you might get something in the moment. Because inspiration begets inspiration. Prophecy begets prophecy. So as someone's sharing, the Lord might give you something as they're sharing, and then it's your turn. And I would just encourage you, let's all just get over um, false humility and insecurity. And if you feel like you got something, just get up here and share it. And don't wait for two hours with no one up here going, oh, maybe it's me, maybe it's me, maybe it's me. Okay, I'm going to go up and share. <laughs> just come on up and share your word, okay? I think that's about all that I got to say and I will just this is a prayer but I just bind any mess of the enemy any spirit of the enemy from interfering with this time in Jesus name and I don't think I have to say this but if anyone here is here with malicious intent I bind you from sharing and I bind you from getting out of your seat uh, in Jesus name I don't sense that though <laughs> So, with that being said, I'm going to put a few people on the spot who made a mistake of telling me their word before tonight <laughs> to get us going so I don't sit down and then we all really wait. Actually, they told me tonight. So, I'm going to ask Miss Samantha to start us off <laughs> and share something that she shared with me right before the service. And then I'm going to ask Mr. Mark to come up and share up here what you shared with me right before the service and that's going to get us going that's going to get the, the pop we're two minutes into the microwave and the popcorn's <laughs> popping all right and then uh, if you have something to share come on up and share it um so i shared with pastor earlier tonight um it's from psalm 127 our scripture says that unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. And I just really felt a word of encouragement for this house and especially for leadership and for staff that you have not labored in vain, that things maybe haven't looked the way you thought that they should or the way that you thought that they would. The timeline maybe is off from your expectations, but your labor has not been in vain because it's the Lord's blueprints and he's building this house. He's building you individually as houses, but he's building this house for his glory according to his will and his plan. So I just release that as encouragement, as blessing over this house and over our leaders. Popcorn. <laughs> Pop. <laughs> I watched the other night, I watched you preview what was going to happen tonight and everything, and the Lord just spoke to me that there are either people or something's going where it feels like we're taking one step forward here and two steps back. Well, he put that on my heart, and he said, this year I'm the conductor of the train, Jesus is, and then we're moving forward. Yes. And another thing, this is kind of a personal thing, last time I came here, 
she on stage brought me closer to heaven than I've ever been. And this time too, it's amazing. Okay, so when I went back there and I was standing, um, it totally has to do exactly with what those guys are talking about. It was like, he was saying, this is our tribe. This is our tribe, and he's like, and he showed every single person, and it was like so cool because when I looked around, it was like this flannel and that flannel and that flannel and that flannel, and he just goes like this. He goes, he shows like this, this cool narrow path. It was just like this we saw a few years ago, this narrow path, and he's just kind of like just bringing and knitting our families together, just like like that. He's bringing them real close. All these people here are our tribe, guys, or his tribe. And it's, and it's coming like this. And he's going like, here, here's 2024. And Aaron, you're right, man. He's like, I love you. So here, knit it together. Yeah. lady named Jordan sent this to me um, Thursday afternoon. She said, I can't be here this weekend, but please share this. Today, God revealed to me in a vision, <clears throat> shine. We as a church will shine for the Lord. He gave me this vision of us setting high on mountaintop, shining for the world, and gave me the scripture, Deuteronomy 26, 1. He will set you high above all nations. He Excuse me, let me start that again. He will set you high above all nations which he has made in praise, in name, and in honor, and that you may be a holy people to the Lord your God, just as he has spoken. Last year, the God did, God did a lot of amazing things in this church. Um, but through unbelief, the enemy bruised our heel last year in a lot of ways. I'm sure a lot of us feel that. But this year, 2024, we will bruise his head, and we're going to move forward. This is a uh, Acts chapter 2. In the, in the last day's promise. It was a promise back in the book of Joel, like he said a while ago. And Acts. So it was in Acts. It was in Joel. We prophesied in Joel and we completed it in Acts. And this is what I... I want to find back here. Okay, here we go. But this is that. Spoken by the prophet Joel. This is tonight. Everyone here can prophesy. Do you know that? It's for everyone. He said, There come to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons, your sons in here, there's daughters, and daughters shall prophesy, and young men shall see visions, and me, oh man, shall dream dreams. And all my servants and all my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. So this is the last day's promise. It's for it's from the Old Testament, New Testament. People say, oh, that stuff passed away. No, it did not. It did not pass away. It was, it was in the Old Testament of that day, and Joel, and today. So it's still, still the same. It's for anyone, whosoever will. And it, it's part of the gifts of the Spirit, one is prophecy. So, so it's, it's for everyone, sons and daughters and old men. I was, I was sitting over there, or this week, I was sitting there praying about this weekend and what was going on. And so I'm sitting over there and I said, God, what do you want me to share? So he picked out a certain verse. So I said, Oh, I said, Well, that ain't that good. I said, But, but, but then this is the funny part. How many times do you flip through your Bible 
and turn to that particular, whatever you're supposed to be looking. Well, I did it with my phone. Your phone don't do that. I hit on the app and it was that particular verse. So here's the verse. It's Isaiah 2, 2, 19. Let me find it. Eyes. Why don't they? Thou shalt go into the hole and of the rocks and into the caves of the earth for the terror of the Lord and the glory of his majesty when he arises to shake the earth mightily. That's not for us. That's for our enemy. That's for the enemy. We are supposed to be shiny. He picked you and you and you and you to live at this particular time in the world. And that verse because things are cyclical in the Bible. I don't care if it's the Old Testament, New Testament. That's what our enemy is doing. Look around you. Look at the press. They're digging holes in the ground to hide. All these big time people. Not us. Because he's wanting us to shine. He don't want us in any holes. He wants us to shine, shine, shine. I'm not going to get into all of my dreams. It happened two nights in a row, and I shared at prayer. But um, the bright, shining gold, I call it heavenly currency, that I've been seeing, I had asked Pastor Aaron um, about dream interpretation. And um, I thought, well, I'm going to get into it and start looking. You know, Everybody here has actually interpreted my dreams and it's heavenly currency flowing out rivers of water filling up the vessel with the new wine that was poured out i saw the fruit on it and the and all of the hands were behind all of this amazing gold and he just i heard him say pastors do you love me and your love makes it all flow you have my sheep you have taken care of my sheep or we wouldn't be here right now it's been so long and not as long suffering as he has been for us you know and um just god bless everybody Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Sada echechika. Miet ya hakete. Det ya hase la takata. Jemba da da se koko la tayatie. Noche he. Hoka. Yaha. Ho la la na 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 pa. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we worship you. We worship you, Jesus. So I got the just this inside of me of excitement just great excitement because of what God is doing and what he wants to do I mean he has got big plans for us big plans and those of us that tend to be a little more quieter than the others we're going to learn more and walk with God more and we're going to be taught by one another. So the excitement is what he has for us and what we can expect from him. Get in the word and stay in it and believe it. Believe it because it is true. It is true. So there's one other thing. Um, A year or two ago, um, Pastor Aaron had me read something. And I've got it here. 
and it spoke to me a lot. I was telling him about that. It's just a little short thing, if I can find it. And it was about love. And I, in times, have been a little um, withdrawn. But this is what he told, he spoke to me in January 18th, 2022. It says, start walking in love, God's love. Walk, love like you've never walked before. Do what you've not done before. Give of yourself like you've not given. Um, and then there was resist thoughts that cause us or me not to, not to be, I, I think it was resist the thoughts that try to tell me that I'm not like what God's wanting me to be. And he says, yes, you are that. In me, you are. So, and then I got love is a verb. So, I'm excited. You know, we all have a lot of things going on in our life that may not be good. But we can be excited in Jesus. So, amen. Yay, Jesus. During most of the services, I'm in the back praying. And for several months, I've seen, uh, well, I see Jesus up here all the time. And several months, he was standing like this because he was crucified. Now he's standing like this saying, come, all that are weary. I'm broken hearted. dropped one word in my spirit and it's longevity and I thought well Lord what do you say and because longevity we think of long life he said that's right I've given this church long life this is a healthy church and we're not going anywhere <laughs> and if I may I feel like the dream I had when we first came here kind of ties in Barry and I didn't know anyone, and uh, right before I woke up, I dreamt that Ronnie, Uncle Ronnie Liming and Aunt Marion and Barry and I, and silhouettes that I couldn't see faces, and I believe that's because I didn't know anyone. We were boarding a, mili a military helicopter, and uh, then it landed. We get off, and Ron hands me a weapon. And I said, what are we doing? He said, we're going to battle. So I asked the Lord, what does this mean? And he said, they are an end time church and I'm sending them an army. So you may not know it, but if you've joined this church, you've joined an army. You might feel like you're in boot camp. I know I have. <laughs> I didn't want to share, but then she shared, so I had to set my stuff down and say, okay, I heard you. <laughs> so a couple things. Um, for the past couple months, I've heard the Lord talk about relationships and that we need to be building relationships with each other. And then I got a word tonight, and I didn't think they were related, but through all the sharing, the Lord showed me that they are. So he wants us to focus on relationships, but then tonight he told me the word March. And I thought he meant the month for a second. I was like, what's going on in March? But um, then I saw an army. I saw troops together. And so when I was asking God, okay, what's that mean? We have to have those relationships. When you're an army, you trust that the people you're with have your back. You trust that the people you're with, you don't have to look back and say, you got me. You don't ask that. You know they have you. So 
we're supposed to be marching forward together in step, but those relationships are important because we have to know that we have each other. We have each other's back. If one of our brothers goes down, we have to be there to pick them back up. If someone is falling behind, we have to help push them forward. We have to have those relationships, know what's going on in each other's lives, not just what we see on Saturday and Sunday. Have those relationships outside, and if you have a word for someone or if someone's on your heart that week, pray for them, reach out to them, write them a letter, send them a card, do something to let them know that you love them and that you care for them. Let's build those relationships so that we can be that strong army for the Lord. This is scary. Okay. Um, so when I was dancing up there, I felt like he gave me fire or cloud by day, fire by night. And I looked up a vert, like the verse um, from where that was, and it's Numbers 14, 14. And it says, they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land that they have heard that you, Lord, are among the, these people, how you, Lord, are seen face to face, how your cloud stands over them, and how you go before them in a pillar of cloud by day and in a pillar of fire by night. So, yeah, he's our pillar of cloud by day and our pillar of fire by night, and he's leading us into what he has for us this year. So. a few weeks ago when we were playing the song on the altar I was praying and listening to the lyrics and when we got to the part that says I want to be the oil I felt like God was saying that we here at Free People need to be oil fires and I just knew I need to do some research on that because I didn't really know anything about oil fires other than you can't put them out with water and they're hard to put out um, so I looked it up and here's what I found not all fires are created equally. Fires are classified by how dangerous they are and how difficult they are to put out. Lower class fires, such as class A and B, can be put out by quenching them with water and are not at all that dangerous because they can be smothered easily and quickly. However, the higher the class, the more dangerous the fire becomes. Fires in class C and D can be put out simply with water. In fact, they can even react with the water and spread more. These are very dangerous fires. However, there is one more class that is more so, class K fires. This classification refers to fires resulting from oil. <laughs> this is the most dangerous type of fire because it spreads so rapidly. When the oil reaches high temperatures, a sudden and potentially volatile fire can easily ignite and can spread rapidly due to the flammability of the oil. And I didn't know what volatile meant either, <laughs> so I looked that up too. And it means to change, it's likely to change suddenly and unexpectedly. All of these classes of fire have one thing in common though. They need oxygen to burn. When the oxygen is removed, the fire is quenched. So what does this have to do with us? When we pour out our lives as an offering to Jesus, when we give him all of our hearts and hold nothing back, he ignites us into class K oil fires. Fires burning dangerously bright with his anointing. He makes us volatile so the enemy never sees our attacks coming. We will be dangerous to the enemy's kingdom. We will cause damage to him. We will spread and ignite everything in our path. We will not be quenched as long as we stay close to our oxygen, our power source, which is Jesus and his word and spirit. We will be the oil and we will burn. Um, this is very, very simple, but I feel like God told me that um, God takes care and he loves his own. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's it. Okay, so after those three, I have to, I, now is the time. Um, so as we were worshiping, I had a vision of, and this is for the children and the teens of our church. I'm going to release a word over you. Um, I had a vision of them all together, and you guys were digging wells, and you were digging wells of fresh intimacy to the Lord that would bring a fresh revival. But as you were digging, as you were digging those wells, the new wells, they broke ground on and found ancient wells that had been filled in. And the new wells that you guys were digging 
opened up into the old wells and a fresh revival poured from overflowing buckets. And the Lord gave me Jeremiah, <laughs> Jeremiah 1, 6 through 8. Then I said, O oh Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak, for I'm only a youth. But the Lord said to me, do not say I'm only a youth, for to all or for to all to whom I send you, you shall go. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. When we were out in the parking lot um, praying earlier, I seen foot traps. Anyone here's ever trapped, live trap, foot traps. I hate foot traps. I hate them. My husband hated foot traps. He thought that was horrible. Well, I seen them out there or somewhere, several feet apart, maybe 16, maybe nine of them. So then, what's in me said, let's set those traps so nothing can get in them. So as we were praying, we spoke into, and I don't know the correct word, I always think spring in the animal, but when we would walk by one, we'd hit it with a stick and it closed. So in the spiritual world, we closed some traps because that needed to be done. And um, I'm grateful that what was said out there, and we're just praying for the body of Christ here, what was set out there for a trap has been closed in Jesus' name. Yeah. For Tobit is ordained of old, yea, for the king. It is prepared, and it has made it deep and large, and pile thereof is fire and much wood. The breath of the Lord, like the stream of brimstone, does kindle it. I got a Bible verse and like a little sentence my buddy Isaac gave me. He says, be a menace to the darkness is what he told me. I thought it was super cool. So I got, I pulled up a sword that um, I got told a while back. Kathleen shared to me. It said, it's Luke 10, 19. I've given you authority to trample on square, snakes and scorpions and to come, overcome all power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. So early last year, I felt um, in our church fast, I felt um, God told me that like I've been called to fast more uh, for more things. And this year during, towards the end of our, our corporate fast, um, I ran into two different people from two different parts of my life, one from work and one close to my home. And here recently I ran into somebody else and um, they all talked about, you know, I don't like to fast, and now I feel like I should fast more. And one of them actually said, I feel like this is the year of the fast. And I just, I feel like um, that's what God is asking us to do. And if you feel like that's uh, something that God is giving you, let's get together and, and concentrate our efforts. hand just just started itching real bad and I thought what is that he said tell them I'm going to bless their hands to make as much money and he's blessing for money then with houses some doesn't have how a home or some he's going to bless your hands to make the money to get your home and everything else you need
My kernel came from the first pop. <laughs> Did not know it was even going to happen. Brought me to 1 Peter 2.5. You are living stones that God is building to his spiritual temple. We are the living stones. So the Lord gave me this on August 26, and I knew it was for the church, and it would it was to be released, and he told me it wasn't time, and now he says it is. So um, I remember the service distinctly because um, I was just in heaven, lost, worshiping him in the back, and Kai was jumping in the air, twirling, and it was just an amazing service, and, and I would just praise him, and then he'd tell me to write, and then I'd praise him some more, and he'd tell me to write, and so this is what it was. Wakey, wakey, the time has come to walk in the peace and authority of God, no longer taking his name in vain ever, and I knew what he meant by that. It means when you pray in Jesus' name, you believe, you believe, or you are taking his name in vain. Believe what he has said he has given you. No more being distracted with what is going on in this world. You abide in the kingdom of God through the blood of Jesus Christ, Yeshua. You are not of this world. What has to come or what is to come does not apply to you. I reserve my wrath for my enemies, which you are not. You are the righteousness of God. Be peace carriers my children and so we've heard tonight about armies and marching and things like that but when the Bible talks about the whole armor of God your feet being shod with the gospel of peace is a weapon and in a time now when there's so much arguing and discord peace can be a mighty weapon in the kingdom of God and the other thing that I've been talking to different people about the Lord's been revealing for a few weeks now is the like-mindedness of people that he has gathered in this place we came here uh, the first week of April in 2022 and ever since then I've just been meeting more people that they were sent here about the same time so I don't know what spiritual transition happened at that time but the Lord has put like-minded people together um, and that is very important because on the day of Pentecost, they were all in one mind, one accord. It's very important to be like-minded because that's the mind of Christ. And so I bless you with this. For whatever reason, now's the time to release it. I've held on to it since August. And so I ask the Lord to prepare your hearts to receive it and for you to apply it to wherever in your life he wants you to grow. Thank you. So when we were back there in the spirit and worshiping, um, I got a real heavy presence that there's a lot of heaviness in this room. And before we can move as a church in 2024, we need to get rid of that heaviness. Whatever is on your heart, your soul, your mind, your body, I mean, it was strong. And I felt like I could just fall over. And... Uh, so it wasn't a word, but it, it was meant to be for me to come up here to tell us all this. Love you guys. I don't usually do this, so I'm really nervous. <laughs> but um, I feel like over the past two or three years, um, the churches um, went through a lot. Um, I feel like Satan's been allowed to sift us. 
this church has not been doing great work for the Lord. Um, so many people in the county, well, not just this county, but other counties too, coming to know the Lord and accepting him as their Savior. Things being done in other countries because people were so generous. And, you know, Satan saw that. And God allows us to be sifted and tested to see if we're going to stay faithful. And um, it's, it's been a hard three years to watch people I love be hurt and persecuted, to watch this church be persecuted. Um, and the hard part is that it didn't come necessarily from non-Christians. It came from within the body and the bride of Christ. Not always, but... Um, and I felt like a lot of times I'd come into worship, and I don't know if other people felt this, Sometimes I'd feel like, am I doing this right? Am I pleasing God? Or is this church doing what we're supposed to be doing? And it hindered my worship. And it hindered me being able to hear the word sometimes. And um, I let it occupy too much space in my head. And um, last fall, and I know, I feel like a lot of other people felt that way too. And that it was hindering them as well. And... Um, I kind of forget what I wanted to say, but um, so last fall, um, I think it was late fall, um, Aaron did a, a sermon series, and I'm sorry, but right now my mind's a little blank, but it was, it made me feel like it's time to move on. This is, and then Caleb, I think, gave a sermon, and Amber, and then we had some community, some communal prayer time up here early this year and different things. But early, late last year, I started feeling like the Lord was saying, everybody's talking about what's their word going to be for the new year and everything. And I thought, I don't have one this year. I just felt kind of, I don't have one. And at the first of the year, towards the end of last year, I felt like it was, I felt like that burden was all lifting that grief, the grief of loss, the grief of rejection, persecution. It started lifting, and through those sermons and those words that people would um, give, that um, it freed me of that, and I could come in and I could worship, and I wasn't thinking about, is this right? Is God? Is this acceptable to God? And then um, I don't know if it was during the fast, but I felt like God was telling me we're kingdom builders. It's time to stop dwelling in the past it's time to let that grief go because all that pain and hurt it was just spiritual warfare satan was using against us to keep us in our hurt to keep us in our bitterness to keep us in our resentment and keeping us from showing others love forgiveness and mercy and that we needed to concentrate on being kingdom builders jesus said go make disciples baptizing them in the name of the father son and holy spirit and I felt like that was hindering us from doing that at times. Not all the times, but there were times that we were being hindered because we were allowing our hurt and pain to keep us from focusing on what we needed to be focusing on. And um, so last year I, didn't, I decided not to do a Read Through the Bible in a Year program because I felt like it got to where I was like, oh, i got to hurry up and read this. And so I tried doing that on my own, and I didn't do so well. And so this year... Just, I think it was last week after we got through our three-week fast and the Bible study that the church had on there for the for devotion and everything. I decided to start reading through the Bible again in a year because it keeps me focused. And <laughs> you know, there's been a lot of times I've prayed and prayed for God to have um, open people's hearts and minds and um, help them to show love and mercy and um, grace to our church body to our leaders, um, and sometimes it doesn't feel like that's what's happening. And then when I started reading, and I'd read through Scripture, and I'd think, yeah, yeah. And so I asked God to open my eyes to what he wanted me to see this year. And um, <laughs> It's funny because there's been a lot of um, verses on mercy, grace, forgiveness. And I was reading that, and I thought that he was speaking to me that I need to offer mercy, grace, and forgiveness even when I don't want to. And that's the only way I can become a kingdom builder. 
because if I don't let go of that, even, you know, it, there's times when it, I feel like I've like totally go of any hurt or pain and then something will click it, you know, those little triggers and it's right back sometimes. And I've just decided I've got to give it to the Lord because the verses were really convicting me. I can't remember all of them, but, um, you know, just the Lord's prayer. If um, we ask God to forgive us as we, as he forgives us or we want to be forgiven. And, you know, when you, when you pray that and you think about how you forgive others, well, you know, maybe I need to forgive a lot more. And um, there was a verse, and I can't remember where it was, but it said, I, can't, I think he was talking to the apostles, and it said something about, um, I think Jesus or Paul or somebody was saying, uh, Jesus, maybe that if you forgive, if you don't forgive them, I'm not going to forgive them either. And I, it really convicted my heart because I thought, if I don't forgive others, truly forgive them and love them and show them God's mercy, God's not going to, maybe God won't forgive them either. And I sure don't want to be responsible for somebody else being judged because I can't forgive them. And I pray that they can forgive me, that I won't be judged either. But, um, you know, when Jesus walked the earth, he did that. He preached the gospel. He brought the kingdom to earth. And um, he healed the sick. And he cast out demons. And he loved those people. But there was nowhere that I've been able to find, and correct, please correct me if I'm wrong, that he begged people that he dwelt, you know, there were people that rejected him. Did he go and constantly say, forgive me? And he didn't. He let them choose if they wanted to love him. And um, I feel like there was a verse this morning that spoke to me, and it's kind of, it sounds harsh, but it's not. It says, do not give dogs, it's Matthew 7, 6, do not give dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they may trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. And I thought about that, and I thought, yes, we need to love others. We need to um, forgive them, and we need to offer grace and pray for reconciliation. And then we mean to move on. That's what Jesus, I feel like that's what Jesus did. And because if we don't, we can't be effective on the earth. We can't bring heaven to earth because we're so focused on our hurt and pain. And so let's make sure we throw the sacred and our pearls to those who want it and who want to hear it. And I just pray for all of our leaders. I know they've suffered a lot and that God will help them to see that they have his grace and mercy and that they are walking with him and they're going to be rewarded. We just got to keep working. And as a body, we can't expect them to do it all. We have to be willing to sacrifice and we have to be willing to go out and preach and teach the gospel to others ourselves and show them love's God, God's love and mercy. And we are going to be kingdom builders. And I'm sorry that took so long. <laughs> I think I'm here for an object lesson. Um, as she was sharing, as I was praying earlier, I was asking God for a word. He's like, he didn't give me one. But I felt the impression that if I walk up here, he will. <laughs> and um, so this is my escape plan. <laughs> that That's for someone else. That you might feel compelled to come up here, but you don't know what to share but that when you start to do, he will give you a word. Luckily, he gave me a word before I came up here, so this is great. Um, when she was sharing this past three years, um, when she said three years, I heard three syllables. Um, Vic Tor Re. <laughs> and then I heard a verse. Um, this is Psalm 33, 12. 
Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. Blessed is the church whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. And I feel like the Lord is saying that there's blessing in this. That it's time to drink the wine that has been pressed. All right. I was praying into this this past week I just waited for the Lord and the Lord would give me a few words and I would write it down and then I finally sat with the Lord and then he just laid it all out and so and bear with me when I came in here today I had a tickle and so I've had a difficult time even speaking <laughs> <clears throat> So what the Lord revealed to me is a word of encouragement, confirmation, and a reminder for where we are as a church and the direction the Lord is leading his people here at Free People Church. The Lord gave me three words. The first two words were given at the same time, abide and power. I immediately thought of a sermon that Bill Johnson gave a few years ago, Abide and Listen. In that he said, no fruit tree, veggie garden, or vineyard groans and travails to bring forth fruit. It bears fruit naturally if it is fed well, watered well, and pruned correctly. Then the Lord led me to Zechariah 4.6. It's where God gave the prophet Zechariah <clears throat> a message to the governor Zerubbabel concerning the rebuilding of the temple. This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. The work of rebuilding the temple would only be accomplished by God's spirit and not by human might or power. It's from this place of abiding that we naturally bear the fruit of the kingdom of God. He then gave me the word rest. As we abide and stay connected to Jesus, God's grace will enable and empower us to do what he has called us to do. What God has created he will sustain what we have created is exhausting so i sat with the lord and i said lord will you confirm that this is a word for our church and not just a word from a devotion or something else and two days later i awoke in the morning and i had a vision of a book that I had on my bookshelf. I haven't opened it in about five years. So he gave me that vision. It was the book called The Essential Guide to Healing by Bill Johnson and Randy Clark. So I awoke, I got out of bed, I sat down in my chair with the book and I opened it up. It just opened. <laughs> and this is where my eyes went. This fruit is both the moral fruit of Galatians 5 and the fruit of the power of God for signs, wonders, working of miracles, healings, prophecy, words of knowledge, words of wisdom, discerning spirits, gift of faith, tongues, and interpretation of tongues. And then my eyes went down to the next paragraph. And it reads, Glory equals power 
and fruit equals both the fruit of supernatural deeds that Jesus has mentioned in John 15 and the moral fruit Paul lists in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. So as we move forward with the vision for this church, as we set our gaze upon Jesus, we abide in him, we're spiritually fed by him. The fruit of the kingdom of God is naturally occurring and we experience a rest and it's with ease that this comes. He wants us to be fully present in the present moment, experiencing his presence as we experience the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. verses that since the beginning of 2024 that I feel like the Lord's highlighted to me. So it's kind of an accumulation and uh, some thoughts I feel like he gave me to go with it, but mostly they're verses. <laughs> the Lord says, I swore an oath to you. Those are my thoughts, free people church. So <laughs> I swore an oath to you, free people church, and entered into a covenant with you and you became mine. You are marked for me and sealed with an irrevocable seal. The Lord says, I know all things you do. I know all the things you do. I have seen your love. I have seen your faith. I have seen your service and your patient endurance. And I can see your constant improvement in all these things. The Lord says, I know all the things you do. I have seen your hard work and your patient endurance. I know you don't tolerate evil people. You have examined the claims of those who say that they are apostles, but they're not. You have discovered they are liars. They have hurt you, but you have patiently suffered for me without quitting, and I will bless you greatly for being persecuted for my name's sake. The Lord says, practice agape love every day. You love me well, now love my people. Show them what unconditional love looks like. Love others, loving others is how you love me. For what is coming next, you will need to love more. I need you to love at a deeper level, a love that not only overlooks offenses, but also stands in the gap and pleads to the Father, forgive them, they don't know what they're doing. A love that blesses when you're cursed, a love that contends for salvation and deliverance in spite of the spit in your face. This love is only possible through deep consecration. The Lord says, holiness and love are the keys. The Lord says, I will make free people church holy by my truth. I will teach you by my word, which is truth. The Lord says, pay attention to what you hear. With the measure that you use it, it will be measured to you, and still more will be added to you. The Lord says, the unfolding of my words gives light and imparts understanding. The Lord says, the privilege of intimately knowing the mystery of my kingdom realm has been granted to you, Free People Church. Seek it and you will find it. And the Lord says, I will establish my covenant now with you, Free People Church, and you shall know that I am the Lord. I keep hearing faithfulness because your faithfulness is going to bless you and your church. And uh, I had a vision. This church will go out two by two and uh, heal the world, preach the gospel, and heal the sick. We got a lot of work to do out there. People ask me all the time, where do you go to church? Free People Church. We're still here, baby. We're going strong. Too. Um, so it was a um, right. 
So it was a box of band-aids. <laughs> it's like a box of band-aids and a bunch of puzzle pieces. And when your mom was speaking, so he was showing like a box of band-aids and a bunch of puzzle pieces, all going together exactly as he had planned. And um, when, she, when she spoke about something about like the grace and the mercy, and it was talking about, I don't, I don't use the word remnant in my regular talking, but it reminded me uh, what, what, what came to like the spot with the, the, the band-aids and the, the puzzle pieces would sacred and holy um, and um, like privileged and that and it was like that remnant was like a, like an old bandana in my back pocket that we were doing this with and just set it down and just set it down and those band-aids yeah those band-aids for each one of us and that grace and mercy that was going together we were just like kind of taking care of each other through this process um and, I, and we could only pray and push so much for the ones we have to continue to walk past that they pick up that remnant Grab hold long enough. This week when I was praying about this service, I kept seeing my journal that I write in and I kept seeing myself flip to the back where I write my dreams. And um, I made sure to bring that journal tonight and as I was sitting while we've been doing this, I was reading through the back and I was like, none of these are for tonight. <laughs> and I just was kind of doubting myself because of that. And um, then all of a sudden, I remembered this dream that I told to Pastor Aaron and Erica a couple months ago, maybe more. And if I'm remembering correctly and what is in my head right now, it was, um, it was their house. They were building their house, um, but it was being built as an ark. And there were two by two, like the animals coming in, but us as the church, we were the ones that were getting them to where they needed to go. And there was even like a huge like aquarium in the basement of like things. Like it was just this dream that was so detailed of all these animals and how each one of us had a purpose to take care of this ark. And I think that this possibly goes along with um, the three year word that she said of building the kingdom and then building the temple as well. And I just feel like whether we have been in a flood, um, like my mom said, I've only been here since 2022, but um, I just feel like the Lord wants us each to have a place of serving here and that maybe that there are some people that have doubted that they're called to a specific spot or they have doubted um, in general that they'll be used the way that that others are used and I just want to speak over this house that we are all called to serve and serving is not just another thing in your schedule that you fill in that takes up time but and that it's like oh how do I have time to do this um, this serving is something that just blesses you and feeds you too so I just want to encourage this church that if you're not serving or if you feel like the enemy has spoken things or lies to where you like maybe don't believe that you could even do it um, there is a place for you and the Lord is going to breathe encouragement tonight and um, he's going to specifically and tell you and edify things for you and you're just going to believe in yourself and I just ask Lord that that belief just comes and hope comes into their hearts Lord and that we can each be used here and that that is just another way that we just feed on your love and on your presence, God. I remember someone mentioned. 
mentioning forgiveness for, uh, just like against someone else or something like that. But I think some of us hold need, need to forgive ourselves for some things that we've done in our past or just things in general that we've done and not hold, hold like guilt towards herself or something like that I don't know to be honest with you I don't know I don't know how to word it properly I just really felt for freaking forgiveness in yourself so I wasn't sure I would have anything tonight and then Miley got up here and um so if you're like me you never finish a journal <laughs> You just find a new one you like, and then you pick it up, and you start there. So um, so that's what I did. This is an old one that I haven't finished, um, and I just happened to pick it up tonight um, on my way out. And I flip to the back, you know, getting ready to start the next page in it. And I see where I had journaled in it before, and I just glanced over it at first, you know, like, oh, that's cool. And then as the night has gone on, I, um, I just kept coming back to that, like, looking at the verses I wrote down and then I opened my Bible up and my Bible app and I was kind of looking at those verses that I was looking at and before and when Miley got up here and she was talking about serving um, before earlier in the service I wasn't sure I was like is this for people that want to serve or feel unqualified to serve Um, so when I was reading the last time in this and I was journaling it was in Colossians um, and it was specifically in Colossians 1 and I'm just going to read a couple verses and then kind of highlight something i picked out, but um, Colossians 1, 12 through 14, it says, in giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light, for he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. And at the bottom of this, um, when I was journaling, I wrote, qualified, delivered, redeemed, and I just feel like uh, piggybacking off of what Miley said, that those are for people, maybe this is for people that um, just want to serve and just build this community, but don't necessarily feel like they have a place um, or a purpose or that they are unqualified. Um, and I just want to speak against that, that is alive again me, and that you are qualified, you are delivered and redeemed, and you have a purpose here. All right. Um, I want to have time to pray over the staff and leaders. And so this is like a last call. Uh, we'll have maybe, if, if there's a few more, three or, three or four more people that want to share. If you're burning to share something, uh, this is it. So let's, we're going to wind down. And then uh, we'll transition here in a minute. So Matt's burning. I can see it in his eyes. I was actually praying to the Lord to not give me a word for tonight. (laughs) 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 And uh, when when I came in here tonight, um, Brother Paul gave me a song that he was singing in noon prayer time on Friday and the word Beulah stuck out to me in those lyrics and I'm like where have I heard that before I'm like I know I've heard that before and it's old old gospel song if you grew up in church like me sweet Beulah land but I felt like the Lord was giving me a word out of that because Beulah means bride means married I felt like the Lord was saying, the land of the bride has a new name. Isaiah 62, verse 3 and 5, it says, You will be a crown of splendor in the Lord's hand, a royal diadem in the hand of your God. No longer will they call you deserted or name your land desolate, but you will be called Hephza and your land (laughs) Beulah. For the Lord will take delight in you and your land will be married as a young man marries a young woman so will your builder marry you as a bridegroom rejoices over his bride so will your god rejoice over you and songs of songs 2 verse 10 and 11 it says my beloved spoke and said to me 
Arise, my darling, my beautiful one. Come with me. See, the winter is past. The rains are over and gone. And the Lord's like, sing the song. I'm like, Lord, he stretches me on this. Huh. So, <laughs> Beulah land, I'm longing for you. And someday on thee I'll stand. There my home shall be eternal. Beulah land, sweet Beulah land. And I feel like that's what the Lord is saying tonight. It says, this land, this bride, needs to be longing for me. Longing for me. I'm hearing a lot of really, really good stuff tonight. And I was kind of... <clears throat> nagging my my brother Ron to come up here and right as soon as he walked up here talking about a heaviness that he felt but is now gone I was hearing fear do not let fear take a hold of what God's got for you and I think a lot of times there is stuff going on in here because I used to be really wigged out about some of this stuff and um, I kept thinking you know God's not gonna do he's not gonna do anything he's not gonna hurt me don't let that rob any joy from you. Don't let your fear rob what God's got for you. I've heard the saying that God is a gentleman, and I think that, well, he, sometimes you can hope that he's going to be a gentleman when he needs you to do something or wants you to do something, but if not, you're doing it for him, and he's got you. In case you care, I'm kind of freaking out. <laughs> I was not gonna go because I didn't think mine, I thought it was for myself. It is not. Um, the song that keeps coming to my head was one of the first songs that I heard, which is, um, it's Romans 16, 19, which is a like little kid song. But um, I heard it at church camp and that was one of the first songs like, Jesus songs, whatever you would call it, that I heard, and I looked up the verse because I couldn't remember what it said, and in the song it says, be excellent and be innocent, and Romans 16, 19, and 20 says, for the report of your obedience has reached to all, therefore... I am rejoicing over you, but I want you to be wise in what is good and innocent in what is evil. The God of peace will soon crush Satan underneath your feet. The grace of the Lord Jesus will be with you. So I didn't think I had anything at all. And right before Aaron gave last call, I was sitting there and I was thinking, man, Samantha's been two hours strong just playing. And, um, and then God hit me with something. And, um, you know, we were sitting here and we we're talking and we we're listening. All the while, there is background music going. Someone's working, someone's doing something to produce this music. And um, sometimes we're forgetting about it, but it's always there going on. And... Um, God just kind of said, well, no matter what's happening in your life, good, bad, um, no matter what you're paying attention to, I'm always orchestrating something in the background. And then Matt came up. I was thinking this before Matt came up. And then Matt came up, and then he sang his song. And we all sang. And for that moment, Samantha took a break. And we carried the tune out. And we sang, and, and we orchestrated the song. And she just sat and listened, and um, it was just like, there's always going to be the melody going on, and God's always orchestrating it, 
But when we pick up our voices and we carry it out, he, like a dad, he just sits back and he's like, oh, this is awesome. My kids are singing. I underestimated you guys. I think <laughs> I think we could have popped all night. <laughs> That's a big bag of popcorn. <laughs> Thank you to everyone who shared. Um, anybody feeling encouraged? I am. I'm feeling pumped. And scripture says that's one of the main purposes for prophecy is to encourage to comfort and to exhort. And that's what we've experienced tonight. This is awesome. This is fun. And my wife's over here frantically writing down all the words. And uh, I leaned over halfway through and I said, we're recording this. So <laughs> we could come back and watch it later. And I've already, I'm like, probably a few months from now, six months from now, if I'm having a down day, I'm going to go back and watch this service because this is, whew. his words are life. And I, I just feel the Lord is healing places in me. I didn't know need healed tonight. And we're drinking from a water hose. And it's awesome. Um, we were in prayer uh, a few weeks ago. And I've had this f phrase of a verse going through my mind since the beginning of the year and I can't get away from it and it came up in prayer a few weeks ago and I just looked down and I read kind of the passage it was in and when I got done reading the spirit came on me and I said uh, this is for this year this passage is for this year for our church and it's a few verses out of Jeremiah 30. And I just want to read it to you. Jeremiah 30, 18, uh, I think through about 22 or so. Yeah. This is what the Lord says. I will restore the fortunes of Jacob's tents and have compassion on his dwellings. The city will be rebuilt on her ruins, and the palace will stand in its proper place. From then, his people will come songs of thanksgiving and the sound of rejoicing, and I will add to their numbers, and they will not be decreased. I will bring them honor, and they will not be disdained. Their children will be as in days of old, and, the, and their community will be established before me. I will punish all who oppress them. Their leader will be one of their own. Their ruler will arise from among them. I will bring him near. And he will come close to me. For who is he who will devote himself to be close to me? So you will be my people, and I will be your God. God says in 2024, these are words I'm just highlighting from those verses. He is going to be restoring our church. He's going to be rebuilding our church. Songs of thanks and rejoicing will arise from this church. New songs. He will add to our numbers. He will honor us. He will build community and friendship and fellowship in this place. He will raise up leaders from within. We won't have to go out and find people to hire that went to Bible college and live in other parts of the country. He's raising up leaders. He's training up leaders from within that will lead this church into the future. People who are already here. People who are already serving. And this is the verse that I can't get away from. I will bring him near. 
and he will come close to me. For who is he who will devote himself to come close to me? The King James says, for who would dare to approach me? And what the Lord is saying is, he's showing grace and favor on the nation of Israel in this season. <laughs> and what he's saying is, I'm a great king. We cannot approach God. We cannot come near to God unless he gives us access. And what he's saying is, I'm giving you special access. And we know that we all have access through Jesus, right? That's new covenant. Every believer has access through Jesus. But what he's saying for our church this year is he is giving us access and he is going to draw us near to him in a special way. It's a work that he is doing. For who is he that will devote himself to be close to me? We can't devote ourselves enough to draw near unless the Lord gives us access. And he's giving us access. And this is the reason it's been haunting me. The fasting word Adam spoke speaks to me a lot because I did a sermon called Total Devotion to end last year. And that's a word God gave me for this year. He wants total devotion. And this is why. We can't waste the access. The door's open. We can come all the way into the throne room. We can draw as near as we want. But if we don't devote ourselves, like there's, there's a tent of meeting. His presence is in it. But if we never go in, then we don't draw near. And so this is like the greatest blessing. And, and the Lord's just going to do some special things this year. But we have to stay consecrated. And it requires total devotion to him or else we'll squander the access he's giving us. And so it's this really beautiful thing, but it's also this really, there's a weight of responsibility. It's a really serious thing. And so I just want to encourage us with that. Uh, the Lord is speaking so much encouragement over this year. Last year, he spoke a lot of like like this was let me sum up a lot of the words leading the beginning of last year um this is going to be difficult <laughs> this is going to be hard this is what i want you to do it's going to be hard i was lamenting to the lord at the beginning of last year about a lot of leadership stuff going on and i and then i i was praying i was lamenting and then i just waited and i listened and this is what the holy spirit said to me leadership is hard that was his comfort that day I'm like, thanks, Lord. That's all I got. And uh, last year was a hard year. Uh, and sometimes we have those years. And, and to be honest with you, it was intentional. It's because we made a lot of hard decisions that needed to be made. Because that's what the Lord led us to do. Um, and I'm so excited that He's speaking a lot of life and grace and goodness and favor and blessing over this year. So I'm excited. So I'm just going to pray and then we'll transition to our last thing here. God, wow, I'm just so grateful for tonight. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. This was so beautiful. It was so beautiful to hear your, your people hearing what you're speaking to them and sharing it. And it's just such a blessing and such an encouragement, God. And Lord, I just thank you that about halfway through, I thought, no, there's been so many good ones. I'm already forgetting. I'm already forgetting what people said. Oh no, it was so good. I want to, it's like we all heard 50 sermons and they were the greatest sermon tonight. And uh, I was so comforted by that verse, Lord, where you said the Holy Spirit will remind you of everything. And so I just believe and I ask, Lord, as we go out from this place tonight, as we're going through our lives this year, that there, in some of the dark moments, some of the hard moments, you'll be like, remember that word that so-and-so shared at the prayer night? And you'll just call it to mind. You'll be like, that was for this year. And that was for you right now. 
And so I just ask for that, Lord, that you would call these things to mind when we need them. And I just thank you for every person who shared. And Lord, I just pray uh, that you would continue speaking to your people and that we can uh, continue sharing with one another, that we can each prophesy in turn so that everyone's encouraged. And it's just so awesome. It's so awesome. So thank you so much. And uh, we love you, God. We love you. And I just pray that we can be faithful. We can be faithful to the words that were shared tonight, God. That we can do our part and be faithful uh, to the encouragement and the instruction that you're giving us. And uh, that we can move forward in faith this year in 2024. So we love you, Jesus. And we just consecrate this whole year to you. We give you our church. We thank you that you are leading this church. (laughs) We say, come and have your way. And uh, it doesn't end with tonight. Our eyes are still on you. And we're going to keep listening and asking for your direction every step of the way that we can stay present in the moment as someone shared tonight. We can abide in you and see you move in mighty awesome ways. So thank you, Lord. Thank you for speaking. And I just pray this would encourage everyone here. And maybe if we share it later, people who watch it or whatever, that you speak to us way more than we realize you do. And we all can hear from you if we just take the time to listen for that still small voice. So thank you for your voice, Holy Spirit. Thank you for moving among your people. We love you, Lord. And uh, we thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.